Um, so, hello everyone. Hope your week has been good. We're back again, and basically as the rotation goes, we are back to planning. And, well, we have a lot of different things I'm currently in the process of planning for. I'm planning a planning on a D&D 5th Ed game for the Extra Life game here coming up on September 9th. Um, I am planning for this stream's next uh, adventure to be a Pathfinder Society quest. And on top of that, I have another game I need to prep for at some point, uh, which is a Pathfinder 2nd Edition Adventure Path. Um, got a group going through the the Wild West adventure, whose name has just completely skipped my mind. Uh, but so for today, I figured we'd start off with, as you can see in the title of the stream, we'll go ahead and start off with doing a the Spelljammer Academy stuff, which came out relatively recently, within the last couple of months, um, as a lead in into Spelljammer proper. Uh, they released a series of adventures uh, that get your characters essentially to level three um, and get them introduced to the weird and wonderful world of Spelljammer. So I'm leaning towards running that for the extra live stream. So I figured I would go ahead and start writing that out as that will be a change of pace from the Pathfinder adventures or the old D&D basic adventures, which is what we've done the last couple of times. Um, so to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, this is the D&D Beyond adventure. Um, this is how you essentially get the Spelljammer Academy orientation adventure. Um, if you have a D&D uh, Beyond account, you can get that um, and you can pull that adventure in. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's organized a little better than some of the PDFs and other stuff we've looked at here. Um, it, actually, it actually has hyperlinks inside of it, um, but it's still relatively straightforward. Um, it's still pretty much a, you start at the top and you scroll through everything. There's a table of contents on the side, but if you're looking for particular things, you have to know exactly where to look for it. For example, if you want to know where locations are located, they're under part two, academy orientation, then academy locations, and that gets you all of that. Um, the actual adventure bits are kind of scattered throughout this um, as it is a beginning adventure. Um, it is a, uh, basically, it's one of those go to every, go from point A to point B to point C um, and C, yeah uh basically what event basically there's an activity that takes place at each one so if you're looking for the thing that happens in the cadet quarters you have to go to cadet quarters and there's the task in there so all in all basically it's it's, it's not organized terribly um but i feel like using lore link we can organize it better and at least more quickly be able to access stuff inside of uh, lore link jumping to particular areas and get a better overall feel for what the adventure looks like um, using lore link. So, flipping back to lore link. That was the wrong button. That's the right button. So, flipping back to lore link, I've already started, um, as, is, as is usually the case, I've started by creating the campaign off camera and I've done the majority of uploading all of the images that are in uh, basically in the academies. You can see I've got them all in here already. Um, I've also done the the, te the the slightly tedious part of uploading them, naming them, tagging them, and including the alternate text uh, with the alternate text description uh, for them already. So you don't have to sit there and watch me type those out. Um, so the question is when you're looking at this basically that D, D beyond adventure there's a couple of different ways you can start um inside of lore link you can and lore link doesn't particularly push you to one way or another we wanted to be flexible in terms of you can create this how you want to create this so if i wanted to i could create all the events that happen and go through that first 
um, or I could sketch out all the locations. Um, I could start by creating all the NPCs and the monsters and filling those out. Um, or I could go through and basically start thinking about the timeline and how things will actually build out. Um, I think I'm going to start with the locations just because of the fact that this is essentially a organized tour adventure. Um, it feels like it makes the most sense to start with locations. Um, as a as a note, this is the spell this is the spell jammer academy uh, adventure. So I am going to be going into some details uh, of what happens throughout it. I know that some of the people in here actually will be playing the adventure later, but I'm not going to go too deep in and hopefully won't spoil you too much. But if you want to go in absolutely 100%, basically surprised by everything, basically, this basically come back and watch the stream later. We will have a VOD for a couple of weeks. Um, but if you're still here, let's start with the locations. So inside of here, we have an overall, basically our, our locations tree. We want to we want to go ahead and create the the top level, um, and for this we could create a template, but these should be relatively quickly quick to create. So let's just create the top level as the academy itself. Um, do we have any basically a good description for the academy? Uh, there isn't a good one in the adventure. They just kind of expect you to. Uh, Let's see here. That'll work. So we'll use the description of the academy. We'll use that also as the read aloud. Um, we'll modify that slightly. Do it for the read aloud version. Spelljammer Academy on the island of Vibril. All right, we'll go through that. Um, and we do have a map. So let's go ahead and add that. Spelljammer Academy. Um, I could just type map. And I already tagged it. So I tagged all three of these images as map. So a quick search on map quickly narrows it down to just the maps for me. So I can just add that in and insert that cool and now i can save that and now i have my spell jammer academy location now i'm not going to go too deep into stuff at this point so let's just kind of let's get the broad strokes of the adventure in here and then later i can come back through and do a more the more tedious adding in stuff so um we know the fact that there are um as you can actually kind of see on the the map that they give you here there we go. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different areas. Um, we do have a security level. So basically, and that applies to all of these areas. So we may want to create that as a template so we can just create that tag on there once um, and we don't have to worry about it. So let's go ahead and do that. Go back to locations. Create a new template. We'll call that the. Uh, I can spell spell jammer. The fact that Google Spelling actually knows the correct spelling of spell jammer is a world I never thought I would live in. Um, so we don't really need read aloud or that. We will just create that. We will go inside. Um, and we're going to create a custom field, create a new custom field, and we'll call it security level. Um, security needed to access. So short, basically, is a, a short and long. I know this will drive some programmer out there nuts that they are not actually short and long number types. They are short and long text fields. Uh, we only need a short text field for this, so we will do save that so now that we've created that uh, we will go back to locations and we will start adding locations from the adventure in here uh, academy locations 
Looks like the first one is administration because they do these in alphabetical order. That's nice of them. All right, so we'll base it on the Spelljammer Academy location. Confirm that. Uh, we don't need those locked, so we will unlock those. Um, and then we'll go ahead and quickly put some things in here. And do, uh, you know, these again, we're doing mostly broad strokes, so I'm not going to, we'll save that. Oops, I forgot to change the name though. So we'll go back in here. That's based on template. Right now the image we could, basically if I, rip, if I wanted to, and what I may do later is that big map has tiny maps inside of it, and I could cut that up and stick those in there as the maps for all of these. Um, but for right now, we will just do administration for that. Save that off. Okay, let's just keep creating some locations here. Uh, oh, I forgot to put that under Spelljammer Academy. I can actually make that easier for me by doing that. And then I'm going to go actually back to my template. And because I know that everything I'm creating is going to be underneath that in the template, I'm just going to go ahead and modify the template. And that will fix all the future locations I create from that. So if I go back in here and I create a location and I say it's from that template, it's automatically going to lock that in as the Spelljammer Academy, which will actually make my life a little easier, as I'll show here briefly. Just quickly throw this in here. Bridge quarter, oops, nope, too much text. Too much text. Bridge quarters, that is a misspelling of the word quarters. Try that again, save that. Um, now, because I saved that template, I don't have to necessarily come in here. This plus button automatically creates it as a child, or if I click the location up here, it creates a default blank one, which by default uh, goes to campaign world. But now that I've set the template up and I do confirm, it automatically switches that to the parent to this full jammer academy. So I don't have to keep coming in here and clicking on that. I could just use the quick save quick create on the location button there. So next is cadet quarters. Save that. After that is gymnasium. Do, 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 lock that. <laughs> How yeah, basically there is uh the, basically, the two developers would normally be in chat, or three, technically, apparently aren't here. So nobody called me out on that one. Um, but short and long are variable names in 90% of programming languages. I, it's probably a high number, but it feels like 90%. 90% of the major ones, we'll say that. I can get called on on social media by for calling out too many Comment on the video below to discuss your favorite uh, programming language that doesn't have short and long. Um, but they are, uh, they refer to the number of, the amount of storage it uses to store information about a number. So short and long are basically how much information it stores. <laughs> Comment for content. All right, gymnasium after gymnasium. It's the C doc. Everybody loves the C doc, right? For the C comes to doc. Uh, let's save that. After that comes the simulation stack. Spelljammer is such a weird and wacky world. It's so much fun. It's gonna be fun throwing people for a loop with. Wait, that's this kind of science? Is it's this kind of fantasy? Yes, it has a simulation deck and has an academy, but it's in a world of magic and guys with swords. It is a very bizarre, very interesting world. Spelljammer is one of the most interesting, probably one of the more unique 
uh, I'm going to not acknowledge that pun. Um, one of the more unique uh, settings in that D&D has come up with. Um, basically, it is not quite science fiction, but it's definitely not straight fantasy. Um, it definitely adds... It basically was also, interestingly, a weird way they have of essentially doing a giant crossover uh, between all of their games because they essentially use Bill Denver to say, yep, everything's out there. Everyone from point A can get to point B if they could figure out how to get off their planet and out of their solar system. You totally could get from Forgotten Realms to Dragonlance to Dark Sun to... Uh, oop, come back here. Uh, to Mistara. Uh, from one of the ones we talked about earlier. Um, so it did have basically, and you could get from point A to point B as long as you had the technology to do it. And so you ended up with some weird crossover stuff where stuff from basically from one world would end up being in a different world and you'd end up with a bunch of weird, 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 bunch of work, weird races and groups working together who you'd normally not expect, um, except for Kender. Kender are banned. Uh, literally, I believe there was it was mentioned in the the source book for the Dragonlance spell spelljammer books that any Kenders leaving the Kender planet, uh, leaving Absalom the planet that Dragonlance is set on, were just pretty much thrown back to Absalom by the gods. They did not; they were not allowed to leave. Nobody wanted to deal with them, um, because Kender are a thing. Uh, I don't know if anyone here has actually read the Dragonlance books. Uh, they were my favorite books that I had when I was uh, a young lad in junior high. They were probably some of the first books I picked up at a uh, book sale, which I basically, well, the first chapter book, large book, I'm sure I bought... Uh, I bought other stuff. You don't stand for Kender hate in this chat. I mean, Ken, basically, Kenders have always all been about can you play them in a way that isn't just being annoying? It's it's that general rule of being a player or or being a, basically being a GM and letting what what options you let your players take. Um, Kenders start off as they're a really interesting idea. Um, they are a group of people who are they are a group of people who are entirely innocent. They have been essentially sheltered from the rest of the world. They do their own thing. They live in a ridiculously communal community, and they have incredibly short attention spans. What that meant in the books was that the main character, the, the protagonist Kender, in those books, would not have any sense of personal belongings or possessions. And they would just end up with other people's stuff constantly. So basically someone would be like, oh, hey, where did this MacGuffin go? And oh, no, the Kender has it because, well, the Kender, you put it down. <laughs> yeah, getting jaded could probably definitely put a, basically put a crimp in that. All right, so we've created locations. Um... Yeah, and so what you would end up having is you would end up basically, yeah, you would end up with people who would take advantage of the fact that they would steal a lot or to essentially make themselves annoying to the rest of the party, because anyone would, someone would pick something up and the Kender player would be like, nope, I take it, um, and but just because they wanted to have all the stuff, and so they would just take it. And so you would end up with this weird, you have to treat the character as if they're a sheltered child while they're being played by an adult who's just being a jerk. And it quickly could cause conflicts inside of parties. Um, as such, it was kind of one of those things that everyone kind of wondered when they started, when they were reintroducing them to D&D 5e, if they could do them in a way that... Yeah, well, it's... The idea of the fact with Kender is the fact that 
they're they always end up with other people's stuff because they have no ideas of personal belonging so if you put something down it's theirs so people would role play that as kenders would just be enormous kleptomaniacs and anything that the player wanted they would just have the kender pc steal but then they would be like oh no i didn't think i didn't think you'd wanted it because you put it down in your pockets haha i am an innocent child you can't touch me um so let's go do, do, do. quickly back to this we'll basically go to um uh, characters so let's go, let's go ahead and put some characters in there that are in the adventure um all right, we'll go with this individual. The question is, do I want to... I don't really think we have stats for characters at this point, so I don't need to go through and create a template for them. I may need to create a template later. Um, actually, let's do that, because adding a template sometimes is not something you want to do because you already know what you want, um, and you want to add a bunch of fields, but it's also nice to create a template if you want to, if you think, oh, hey, I may come back here later and add stuff, and I only want to add it in one place. So, for example, in this academy, there are officers there are many multiple npcs who fall under the rank of officer um, and as such we're going to go ahead and create a template for those even though they're we don't have stats for these characters yet but if we want to later come back and they're like oh these officers have basically have security clearance and we want to be able to track that i want to be able to add that security clearance in one place add the custom field to just this space spelljammer academy officer um and then save it in, basically save it in that. So let's go ahead and do that. And now I can go ahead and create those and discover I apparently, no, I did, okay. Uh, oh, I didn't put a description there. That's why there's that dash, okay. So go ahead and lock that and change that and rename. Take that one. and then their description and then because I already uploaded it I have an image for them let's go ahead and pull that out again I've already tagged these as officers so it's much easier to just pull and save that and so now we'll just do that a couple of times. And yeah, basically they were, the problem was that especially back in the eighties and nineties, when you have a bunch of people who are sitting around and playing at the stereotype, as it were, the people who are playing it is a lot of people who the game was more, it was more of a game and less and less of an experience. So People, would, you, would, you would come in and people would be like, no, 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 you have to play the game exactly as written. If the rules let me do something, you have to let me do it because it's in the rules. And so the, the rules give me the ability to um, annoy people by stealing stuff. That means you have to allow me to steal stuff because it's in the rules um and you know it's ruining the experience for other people it is a lot of people would end up basically just going through and doing that um and so as D, &D has matured and people have realized that hey this game is actually not about winning it's about having an experience um Basically, you can, you've gotten a lot more of uh, a lot more flexibilities in the rules in terms of oh yeah actually no people want to actually play and have fun so respect that but those people still exist who who say well it doesn't say it in the rules or the rules don't particularly cut it out um. 
as the player base matured i mean by definition yes they have gotten older <laughs> um i think some of those people yes have gone from being a teenager and to be fair to some of those people um when you were playing D D in your friend's basement in the in the 90s 80s 70s whenever you were playing it it was a game you didn't really have a clue what this weird tabletop role-playing thing was and so you got handed a rule book and a lot of people that was the the, the way they dealt with it the way that they uh, grokked it as it were um was to immediately look at it as okay it's a game so i have to do it by the rules and so if you broke the rules or changed the rules or fudged rules you're not playing the game and it's no there's no point in continuing to play um and those people and and plus additionally a lot of those people were teenagers or kids or younger people playing it um though i admit the fact that my parents Oh gosh, I don't want to think about the fact that my parents were probably younger than I currently am when I started playing. Uh, yeah, do you, and, and so and but so therefore, as time has gone on, yes, the, some of those people have outgrown their teenage years and realized, hey, it's more fun when everybody playing the game enjoys the game. Um, secondly um some of those people um have realized that uh i already said this some of those people are, now enjoy the game more um but on the on the other side the the, the game of dnd &D has changed in terms of what market it reached it's no longer for a particular group of nerds in the basement as it was the deal joke kind of went um it is now a game for everybody essentially you talk to somebody uh, and you mention D, D, and there's a higher that higher percentage chance they're like oh yeah i'm aware if they at least aware of it due to things like stranger things having it featured in it if not oh yeah i played a little bit of that um it also has now appealed to a much broader group who have changed why they're interested in playing it, which has been one of the more fascinating things to watch. Um, you've gone from people who are coming into it essentially as I want a hyper realistic imagination is my uh, basically imagination is my only limit video game type situation. Um, and I, I want to win. I want to make the biggest, strongest character and I want to win. Um, and now you have people who are playing it to experience um, a different, basically a different type of life, a different type of world. They're playing it to essentially have an experience. Um, and as such, because that has changed, um, it's basically people's viewpoints in coming into, uh, coming into it have changed so that kind of changes the way that people can approach the game people can play um people are now more interested in being willing to listen to other people when they say hey you doing that is not fun uh, they've given me a character in here and they've given me zero information about them i wonder if they're in the next handout oh well um there's one more character they add though i will go ahead and create them they are not technically an officer so we won't use the template um actually maybe i will because odds are good they will have they will share stuff together with the other ones and now we're going for something really bizarre in spellfinder and spell spell jammer spell finder the, the crossover nobody ever wanted or needed um which is a Thrykreen receptionist. Thrykreen are their own weird race that have come over from three different game systems, much like Kender and other stuff. Uh, Thrykreen, I'm trying to remember, Thrykreen started in Star Frontiers, or at least a race that looked like them started in Star Frontiers, which was D&D's 
or TSRs rather at that point, so attempt to make a sci-fi D&D, which eh, didn't quite work. So, but, so since it didn't quite work, they recycled a bunch of the ideas into their other systems, and they took the praying mantis forearmed people and decided they would work well on their weird desert planet post-apocalyptic game. Why not? Which then it got named Thrykreen there. Um, they were interesting enough and cool enough and different enough that they decided, yeah, they work in a world full of weird space people and uh, other stuff. So they make it off planet somehow. Or maybe they made it onto that planet because not a lot of people make it off of Dark Sun. Dark Sun is a weird post-apocalyptic desert world. Um, also, the only Kisten that has half dwarves, which is a whole different uh, conversation in terms of uh, how to deal with that. Though, more games are actually allowing that. Just because more flexibility is good. No reason to be quite so picky about stuff. All right, now we have all those account those those people. Well, I'm going to go ahead and throw them into their locations so I can keep track of them. So associated game objects. The administrator receptionist is in the uh, administration area. Back to list. Um, the quartermaster is in oh i missed those characters they don't have a picture how dare they um that, that basically those people is in the nexus so we'll go ahead and add that person to the nexus associate game object um and stores of course is where the quartermaster is So associate locations, associate game object, add that in. So we will add that into there, associate that game object, done. Uh, now I need to create a new character. I could go back to characters or because of the fact that I know where they are and I know that I don't have that much information on them, I know they're in the sky docks. So let's go back to the sky docks really quickly and associate game object. And I could go all the way back to characters and create them there. Or I could just click associate game object, create new game object, create new character, and we'll just create them right here rather than going all the way back there. Um, these guys are Kip and Pick Whistle Slap. And with a name like that, there's only one race they could be. That's right, they're gnomes. Gnome Inspectors. I mean, yeah, it might be a halfling name. Maybe Kender. Though it's complicated for a Kender name. Go ahead and dump them in there. Description. Okay. And we'll save that. And that automatically saves it, creates it, and associates it to this location just like that. So I don't have to go through all those additional steps. All right, so we've created those characters. Let's go ahead and create the last. Um, there's actually an additional location that is in a different section of the, uh, the I mean, basically the uh, PDF, or rather the D and D Beyond section. So, which is why I forgot to add it in here. Uh, one of the one of the officers has its own quarters, so. We'll do that. We'll go ahead and associate that. Confirm, which does unfortunately overwrite that because I did things in the wrong order. But we'll call it here. New quarters. Um, we have a read aloud for here. So go ahead and put that in. Um, we'll go ahead and check those. Uh, there's items in there. We'll call out those individuals with bolding them. Just to make my life a little easier. That way that looks a little bit nicer. And we'll save that. And since I know that there is a person in that room, let's go ahead and merge quarters. 
Same thing again. I'm just going to create it directly from here. Create new object. Character. Spell Jammer Academy Officer. Confirm. He is Mert the Merciless. Exactly what you want your academy head to be called. Type of principal who you really don't want to get called to the principal's office for. Um, so, uh, academy head, description. Do we actually have a good description for him? I don't think we do, so we'll just save that and leave that for another time. And we can fill this in later. Because um, the advantage of doing it this way is that if I want to come back, one of the other advantages is I come back to this later because this is a three-part Academy adventure. So you'll spend the first part in here, then the second part, then the third part. Um, and if I choose to build everything in this one campaign, I don't have to um, re basically create a new reference for Mer the Merciless or something like that. All the work I've already transferred in here will already be here. So if I'm in a campaign and we go to the second adventure and one of the characters says, oh, I really want to go back and talk to the quartermaster. Um, we have the quartermaster already in here. We know he's Master Blip. We know he's the quartermaster. We could have his stats in here already so that we don't have to go back to this adventure in D&D &D Beyond to pull it up. Um, so that's already done for us. So we have the locations. We have some characters. Um, so the next thing is basically essentially the big thing which is going to happen here is that we have the location and the NPCs which our characters are all going to interact with. And our characters are going to go through a series of events uh, essentially that will take them through place to place. If they go to a place, an event may happen, or they may be thrust into an event at the start, um, and, and they will encounter that, have that encounter there. So let's go ahead and start creating some of the notes out here for those events. Um, events are the way you can deal with um, something that happens in a location or links to a location. Um, you don't want to necessarily have all that information buried in one long location description. You can if you want, but events allow you to break that out. And they also, because you break them out, you can do things like put them on a timeline and track when certain events are happening throughout the course of the uh, adventure. Or you can associate them with a session um, and keep track of what events happen during that session. Um, and so if the players only get halfway through the adventure, um, as can happen, you can mark, okay, they had this event, this event, and this one. Um, that's particularly useful for this one, um, because this one is very much a more sandbox type thing. Um, so you may list all of the all the events that can happen and only mark off the ones that you want. But we'll get to that later. Let's first, let's add the events here. Um, so we'll start back at the top. So welcome pack we will go ahead and actually let's create a template for this because these are all orientation tasks okay don't need to add a lot of work for that because we're just pretty much again we're just sketching things out here we can come back later um and take a look at it you're the type of person there are two types of uh, well, there are lots of different types of GMs, but essentially there are kind of two ways of really approaching an adventure of any type. There's breadth first and depth first, and now I'm definitely showing the fact that I'm a programmer. Um, but depth first is you go into all the backstory on one character and you create everything you need based on that. So in the case of if I wanted to, I would start with Mert the Merciless and go into his backstory and talk about why he built the Academy and basically what he does in various sections. And as I hit each of those, I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm talking about the storeroom. So now I need to create the store's location. And now he has an interaction with the quartermaster in there. So now I need to create the quartermaster. And you kind of go out from there. Um, or you can do it as more of a breadth first, which is what we're essentially what we're doing here, which is 
we have all the stuff that we know we want to put more details into later, but we really want to just start throwing it out there so that we can have hooks to create and link things together so that when we're done, we can look and say, oh, hey, I have this location, it's attached to these events. I have this event, but it's not attached to any location. Okay, I should fix that and attach it to a location. Or I have this location, but nothing ever happens in this room. Oh, and there's no NPCs, there's nothing in here, so why would any character ever come in here? I need to deal with that. And you can come and take a look at that and fix that later. So they they're both perfectly valid approaches. It's just a how do you basically how do you want to approach it? Are you more are you more wanting to just kind of drill in and hyper focus on something? Or are you the type that really wants to just kind of let your imagination wander around the downside to that is you can end up with a lot of stubs of stuff. Like you could end up with the stuff we're talking about where rooms don't have anything or rooms don't connect anywhere. Um, and you're like, oh, oops. All right. Collect their cadet issue. Welcome packs. Okay, description. And we'll the rest of it there. And as you can see, we have this. We're talking about this uh, Thread Queen Sword Core here. So we can, if we want, because we have a system for mentioning. Let's actually save that and go into it so you can see it better. Um, so we mentioned the Thray Queen named Sorkar, and we have the Thray Queen. So let's just go ahead and, oops, let's do it this way. Yeah, I'll just basically mention characters. And then we know her name is S-O-R, Sorkar. Did I spell her name wrong? I spelled her name as Sakur. My bad. Uh, but now I've got, basically I've created that link there. I can save that. And now you can see that link's there. And if I click on the link, it takes me to the character, um, and I can go in and fix their name. Save that out, and then I can just head back. So that's the event there. Um, toiletry bag, risky equipment, risky. If there's anything in here I wanted to link, I could do that as well. Uh, let's just go ahead and save that there. And let's create some other events. Back to events. Um, again, it's an orientation task. Actually, I should go back and add the location, but we'll deal with that in a bit. Bunk assignment. Okay. Um, actually, I do have a better way of associating these. One second, please. Whoop, there we are. Ooh. Bunk assignment. Report to quarters for bunk assignment. Oh, that's all capitalized. Ugh. I have to put that in the wrong place. Put that in there. Outside the copying, sub copying and pasting from something else. Sometimes you have to deal with what level of capitalization they have in whatever you're copying it from. Doubly so if it's coming from a weirdly fonted image. Okay, um, and description. Go back to that and scroll all the way back down. Because, again, the reason why we have more like is so, because scrolling up and down and then finding exactly where something is and then going, okay, clicking the table of contents helps with that, but uh, sometimes it's just easier to link around between stuff. All right, so that's that. This is text or speech, so let's go ahead and uh, telesize that. Um, now, the interesting thing here is basically the D&D Beyond has a link here on intimidation to the intimidation skill. So, 
we can do the same thing. Uh, we can, except there's a, still that bug with that. Okay, we'll deal with that. We'll come back to that in just a second. So we'll go in here. So if I come in here, we have a link. Oh, it's Control K. I need to remember that. Oops. Chrome decided they wanted to be part of the launch. Okay, so I could technically link it that way. And now if I right-click right -click on that, it will actually take me, I can actually set it up much like D&D Beyond has and link it to D&D Beyond. Now, the downside to this, of course, is that this is a direct link into D&D Beyond, which we don't have currently. We'd love to, uh, but don't currently have any sort of relationship with that. So you have to have your own account with D&D Beyond and you will have to have logged in and be ready for that. Um, otherwise, clicking on that link was just going to take you to wherever. It's going to take you to a login page, essentially. Um, but because of the fact that I, we, this, we have access to it, we can just, so like the bandit stat block, for example, we have a hotkey problem there. Oh, I'm also in the wrong place. I'm not in the text. Bandits go there. Let's go. Uh, let the space there. Put the space there. Um, and inspiration is another link that they have in here. So let's go ahead and do that as well. I'm not going to do that for all of these. I'm just showing that it's easy to just set up those same links to what you have in D&D Beyond. So you're not losing that ability. It takes a little bit. It takes a couple of seconds more because now you have to copy the link and come back in here. But now that I've saved it, if I switch into read-only mode just to show this off, you can see that those links are there. I can just click on them. And I get taken to the same place in D&D Beyond that you would get taken if you were actually inside the application. So, again, this is, we are not affiliated with D&D Beyond. Um, so, essentially, we're not, you're not selling this information. You're basically keeping this, this is for your own personal use. You're just essentially taking it and converting it into a form that you wish to, uh, for your own private use, use, uh, uh, and you, you want to you can use and as you wish a, a legal distinction but one that probably needs to be made um, and we don't have really any images so we'll just go ahead and save that and we'll save out and we'll continue adding events in here so other we'll just quickly do that so I all right, next next assignment is Skydock. Associate that, confirm that, change the name. Um, this is Spelljammer Ship Inspection. It says, uh, which is Skydock. I oh, right, I need to. So, Ship Inspection. That the text is call this spell jamming ship inspection. So spell jammer is a term that Google recognizes, but spell jamming is not. So we've come so far as a uh, as, as a technology, but we have, do not recognize all permutations of spell jamming. Interestingly enough. I guess it's been spell jammer has been used enough recently because of the more uh, recent use. So it isn't too surprising. Okay, uh, let's just add that description. <laughs> add spell jamming to the dictionary. I mean, I could probably do that for my own personal just to keep that from showing up. Go ahead and save that. Again, we'll just kind of speed through the rest of these here. So after that, um, let's 
save this from stores. So next one is do create orientation task link. Go unlock. Go to that. Uh, collect service weaponry. Uh, short description. That one is. Rack. And this is the description. Let me just grab that right there. Boop, boop. Fix that. Again, there are a bunch of links in here, like armor, for example. Um, let me actually go ahead and copy these in because these are super useful. Um, because they're like, these are huge sections which details exactly what your player characters could buy. So let's just go ahead and grab those really quickly. Cut link to dressed. And venture and gear. space and add that space in there um, and last but not least equipment backs packs sidebar it is so nice that we're living in a world where things like equipment packs and things like that we could just link to rather than somebody having to pull out a giant book and slap it on the table and search through it again this led to more rules luring because you got the one player one person who did memorize that thick rule book and of course they knew all the rules and so you either had to disagree with them and that meant that you had to go looking through the rule book and figure out where the rules were or you just had to take them at their word which could lead to them getting a sense of uh control over the way that the group operated uh what else is there oh Spelljammer Nexus for basic training. Again, orientation tasks, lock that in. Nexus training. Let's go here. Basic training. Basic spelljammer training, copy and paste, throw that in. Do that. Save that. All right. Uh, was that the last one or is there one more? Ah, yes, the gymnasium one. Rotation, confirm. The ominously named Gymnasium Assault Force. Because, you know, what you love to hear for your first adventure is you have to go to complete something called an Assault Obstacle Course. Really just kind of brings the morale right up. What's, what's the worst that can happen? Don't worry, they have rules for what happens if you die during the adventure. Yes, that is something that they believe can happen. I mean, you are level one, which is the, as the joke goes, level one characters are most likely killed to be killed, they are most likely to be killed by peasants and house cats. Um, or rather, they are vulnerable to being killed by them because stat block wise, house cats could probably murder some low level characters. All right, let's go ahead. And now that we've created all of these events that we have here, um, the thing we don't really have is we don't really have them linked to any particular location. So we know that this spell, the ship inspection takes place in the sky dock from the description, but we really don't have that linked. 
So let's go ahead and add triggers to all of these. And what triggers do is triggers creates a link between the two of them so that we can say, okay, so we can either link this to other events um, or we can link it to uh, particular locations. You can see the locations are here. So this takes place in the sky dock. So we'll go to that, create trigger. So now if we go to the sky dock, we can see it's got a use by link and it's got a link the fact that the ship inspection takes place here. So we can use that to hop back and forth. So now when we're going through our inspection and the player says, oh, I want to go to the, I want to go to the Nexus. We basically or go to the sky dock. We can go to the sky dock and go, oh, okay, there's an event here. Let me go directly to it. I don't have to go searching for it anywhere else. All right, let's go ahead and do that quick association. Um, and yes, first level spellcasters in, the, especially in early editions, um, where you could have a D4 for hit points, and that was it. Um, most weapons, rocks, anything like that can do D4 hit points uh, worth of damage, which meant the fact that while you were a spellcaster and could possibly destroy the universe once you were powerful enough, uh, starting off, you are likely to basically if some guy with a rock threw it too near you, you were dead. Goodbye. Roll up a new character. Because also, uh, there was no thing as death door or death saves. You hit zero hit points, you're gone. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Have a new character, rather. Definitely made life uh, exciting. Better? Eh, I don't know if I'd go that far, but definitely exciting. Um, let's see here. The welcome pack was administration, right? Yeah, I already associated that. Cool. Doo -ba -doo. Lost track of myself while discussing funk assignments. That one's fairly easy to guess where that is. That one is taking place in cadet quarters. Create a trigger. All right, back to events. Gymnasium assault course, another easy one. That one takes place in gymnasium. Great trigger. Um, and then uh, collect service weaponry is stores. Associate that one. And again, we have that same level of I can create a trigger here. Actually, no, triggers you can't create because they could be locations or events. So currently we don't have that set up. Eventually you will be able to, much like you can, uh, game objects or uh other other types of connections you'll just be able to create them here if you don't find them in the list but for right now you have to have already created them uh back was not the button i wanted back to events and nexus training that one takes place in shockable sharks the nexus so create trigger nexus done all right uh let's go to my nexus that's done that's done um all right so there are some events which aren't associated things which we don't have yet so like so let's go ahead and populate those events in um they're not like orientation tasks so i'm not going to create a they're more one-off so i'm not going to create a template or base them on a template this one is reporting to tarto um Tasks are complete. I can't spell the word orientation. Apparently, I, it's always bad when the game's like, or the game, the Google is like, I can't tell what you were trying to type. You're like, well, I tried. So there's that. Um, again, we have, uh, basically, we have a link to another character. So if we wanted to, we could change that link into... Unless, of course, Lord Link, of course, takes this opportunity to betray me. How dare you? Let's just go ahead and save that. We'll find out what's going on with that. Why for? Would you not? Okay. Page 
Tartan. Mention characters. Hmm. What a fascinating bug. We'll have to make note make note of that. Uh, this is this is the point where I explain that Lorelink is in beta and so or alpha rather. So things like this happen. And it's good, it's good that they happen. We find them, we fix them, and it's good we keep going. That is the point of things like that. That's why we want other people in the system so that we can keep having people run into these things and we catch them now before we're doing things like charging money for things. Uh, we'll have to look at that later. Uh, curious, do I get anything? I got the receptionist earlier. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if it's just in here. Well, we'll move on. So basically, so that's that event. That's them. Uh, basically, uh, going off that. Um, this one we will associate with Mert's quarters, as that is where essentially you'll end up going. So now we have a link to that. So we come to this event, we can look at the quarters. Uh, all right. So is there any other events that we need to create? Um, yes, we'll create the last event, and we'll just do this in brief sketches so we don't give away too much about what happens during it. Intruder alert. We'll just call that combat. Um... Just grab all of this. Well, not you. Uh, so go ahead and call this out so we can see the speech part so we know what needs to be. Let's actually bold that as well. Nice thing about dealing with markup is it's really easy to quickly look at stuff and pull stuff out. Um, read the preface following. That as well. Call that out. And then we have a let's actually save this since we've got a decent amount of text in here. It'll be easier to see if we're in here. So alright, we're in here. There's that. And now we want to pull that in. So we have a table, which luckily again, Markdown lets us add tables relatively quickly. So we can say round behavior. We don't need the rest of you. We don't need the rest of you. We don't need the rest of you. Um, and then we can just add this in really quickly. Two, three, four, five, six. And one. And two, and three, round four, round five, and last, shocking everybody, round six. Then quickly grab some text out of there. One, two, Three, four, five, and six for the surprise twist. There we go. All right, so. That's great. This looks kind of ugly in here. You might be going, okay, what was the point of adding all that? But the nice thing is, when you actually come down here, you can see the fact that that actually nicely formatted into a table, uh, much like you would have seen in D&D Beyond or something like that. And so it's relatively quick and easy to add. Markdown makes that relatively simple to happen. All right. And because of the way it's set up, if you want to type, if you need to dump something out of, say, for example, Excel or something like that, um, 
you can actually set up Excel to mostly kind of export it out in this format. Um, so you could just copy and paste it directly out of Excel, dump it into here, and have that table ready for you. Um, let's do add the last section here. Actually, go into the text right there. Do do do. Oops, that wasn't what I needed to do. That's neat, but not what I wanted. Okay, one last text section, so we'll do that. Oops. Oh, come on. Look at me. Oh, we've decided that we're not working with you anymore. Cute. Uh, we'll just go ahead and save that then. We'll come back into it really quickly. Okay. I think I may have not properly closed the table off because it seems to be being annoyed by something I have done in here. There we go. Let's try again. Again, live product, live using it live. Sometimes, sometimes you win, sometimes you run into problems. So. Apparently something about the way the table is working. Rather, the aftermath is working, though. Is there something else which is causing this? Well, I'm not going to spend too much time debugging stuff alive here. Again, the general state is what we're going for here, so we'll go ahead and save that. Um, but we have that basically something else we have in here we we have those creatures that basically this description talks about so let's add some let's add some creatures ah welcome back Twenty. so let's add these weird guys in they are neogi hatchlings um warning if you are kind of creeped out by weird spider eel things you're gonna see some weird things here um these are these little suckers are tiny aberrations very odd very weird um and for that we're just going to okay, rather than working with it too hard we're just going to go with actually Oops. We'll call it stop block. We'll do control K to add a shortcut. I'll just add a shortcut to their stop block right there. But of course, a picture is worth a thousand hatchlings. Uh, so let's go ahead and add their weird little picture here. Uh, and there it is. There they are. Weird little buggers. Just curious. Yeah, that's what they look like. Weird. Spider eels. Because Spelljammer, again, is a weird place. All right, so we'll save that. Um, and now that we have that reference, we could go back to the event um, and go to the intruder alert. And where the neo geese are mentioned, these eight neo gee hatchlings, assuming that the mention system wants to work with me today. Creature. There we go. Thank you. I appreciate you working. Makes my life easier. Uh, eight neo gee hatchling. Now we have that link there, and so I have a quick link there. I could also, if I didn't want to call all the way back out to my own stuff, if I wanted to just go directly to the adventure. Um, I totally could just uh, 
I could I could link that directly to their stat block in D and D Beyond rather than linking to something in here. Um, but if I want to modify the uh, yeah, hatchlings because if somebody in my group doesn't want to deal with those, or they want to just, or I realize that I need to put something different in to challenge the group or a better way of dealing with it, I can link change what's in my system and maybe keep the same stats, but change put give a different description to them. Um, that level of abstraction I put in there helps me. Let's me do that. All right. So there's technically one one last event, um, which we will just call because it's kind of a surprise. So we won't go too deep into it. Um, we'll call it right into the action. And here's the starting sequence. In. Call out some of those. Do oh, you, you have decided that you are no longer working. Um, one of those days. There we go. That worked. can't type. I've lost the ability to type, which is actually a serious problem. Um, but I'm fine. All right. Uh, there's a battle events table in here, so you can quickly add the table in. So table. Get rid of those two columns. Because we just need the section. Twenty. Column. Let's just add those in relatively quickly. So, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and twenty. No more regrets. Oh, that worked out better. I expected. It's amazing what little tips and other stuff you come up with when you're mass copying and pasting text in or editing stuff. Last but not least, the last one. There we go. Oh gosh, there's actually a whole other table in here. I'm just going to deal with that in a bit. I'll deal with that off stream because we're starting to run out of time here. We're reaching the end of our a lot of time slot here. So I'm going to move on. Leave myself a note. Add appearance table. All right, and then there's the last section at the bottom here. Call that out. And then add that in. Bold and italicize, unless, of course, it is being silly. Okay. 
Okay. Add that in and save that out. All right. So one last thing, the one thing I was mentioning earlier, there are two ways. Now that we have a bunch of events, there are two things that we could do with them. We could create a timeline out of all those events. So we could say, it's gotta be timeline. Um, and we could create a timeline. Oops, we already created it. I need to go into it. Um, and now I can associate all those events I created. So right into the action is the first one at zero. Um, then all of those other ones, all the orientation tasks. Oops, that event that I did have to be at one. So let's change that to one. Oh, that's right in the action. Oh, no. And eventually, we're going to add a feature in that lets you just drag these and move them around. Um, but it's still in the works, so um, it's still kind of a limited feature. Um, as we get more, as we as we get more time to work on stuff, we will be releasing those features and make them more available to everybody. Um, so, orientation tasks. Oh, that's a that's the template. <laughs> Something else to fix. Um, so nexus training is also at one. Service weaponry is also at one. So you can, as you can see, we can add all of these in here. Our list is getting smaller as it filters out ones we've already added. Okay, so all those are at one. Then reporting at Tarto happens at two. Uh, yep, and then last but not least, uh, intruder alert happens at three. There we go. Um, so now we have all those added to it. And because it's been flagged as the main timeline, we now have all those right here. So we can quickly see when we come into our campaign, we've got a quick breakdown in terms of okay what happens during this so right in the action is the first thing that happens then all of these tasks happen then reporting to tarto then intruder alert and then so all of those take place basically in that order so basically when we're looking at our campaign we have a basic outline right away of exactly what happens and in what basic order um so that's that's the advantage to uh timelines obviously in a campaign that has more uh more events that happen spread further out over a time um, or if you have a ticking timeline going on where something in the background is going on whether or not your pcs are there or not uh, you could use this timeline feature to keep those in basically set those up and basically sequence all of those out um, last thing we're going to talk about though is sessions so for this extra life game that we're going to play i'll just call it and call this the extra life game and it will be on september 9th and tony will correct me if i misspoke on that one but i believe i'm correct uh so we are we here are hosting a charity game um basically i say we here and by that i mean uh the company that basically essentially is the parent company is is being very grateful and lending time and talent uh, to me to help me develop all of this out. Um, that is Andromeda Galactic, uh, 4 p.m. on 9-9. Um, so we can actually put that into the calendar right there. So that's 9-9, so that's next week, next Friday um, at 4 p.m. Um, but basically, we run charity streams uh, where, where we attempt to raise money for a local children's hospital here uh, through the Extra Life Charity. Um, in this case, we are running raising money for Riley's Children's Hospital. Uh, so basically, show up, laugh at the group as we attempt to, basically, as I attempt to guide these people through what looks to be a uh, Spelljammer adventure and to see if we can get them all going in this straight line and try to get through this without killing them too badly um and we'll basically and give money to children if you're able so 
it's a good time for all involved. Um, so I feel like charity stream for Riley's Children's Hospital. Assuming I can spell children. All right, there we go. Um, the description, we could put more information if we wanted to. So planning, active. We'll go ahead and set that to active because we know what's going to be coming up here soon. So, yep, basically, I basically, you basically, I have not given too much information, so you probably are still good for it. So, there isn't too much other than the fact that you're you're going to an academy and you're going to visit stuff. Uh, so you should be relatively unspoiled twenty. So, people basically twenty will be playing, Tony will be playing, and some of the other people here at Andromeda will be as well um so in terms of but so what's going to happen is we're going to attempt to get through that game in a perfect world as a perfect gm i would be able to perfectly time everything out and we would never run over we would get exactly everything we wanted to accomplish done right away so i would know the fact that i could add all of these events in here so right into the action i can add uh doo -doo -doo. all those all those all those events in here um and i said made that statement about the completing on time and everything perfect and i know and i know even though i can't hear him currently i know that tony audibly snorted um because we have yet yet to actually finish a session vaguely vaguely in the bounds of the uh of the time frame that we set even games which are meant to be quick for just an hour like next week uh we're going to be doing the pathfinder game uh, basically on this stream so next tuesday we'll be running a uh a pathfinder uh second ed quest and those are supposed to slot into about an hour time frame and i believe last time we ran into two hours on that one but everyone's having fun and having a good time and so it's one of those things that you t t take the joy where you can get it um if you lose players because people have other things they need to do then that happens but in any case uh now that we've added all of this reporting to tarto and last but not least intruder alert so basically we we are basically if we were if we were good and basically perfect people we'd be able to get through all of these things in the next session and this session would be plenty fine and everything uh exactly sometimes players have real life comes up and while while this is technically a job for me in reality it is still a game um, and that's the important thing to to realize uh, is that this is still a game and so when real life comes up, real life sometimes takes priority. Um, so, so all of these events that you see listed here, in a perfect world, we'll be able to get done. But maybe we do, maybe we won't. But so if we tick off, but what this lets me do, because of the sandbox nature, it's going to be hard for me to come back to this if we come back to this adventure later and be like, oh, we only got through half of them. But what half? Because as that timeline indicated, the players can do, except for uh possibly the last two basically except for the last two the players can do these in any order that they want to so that means the fact that i have to be aware of that fact and i have to be careful and this guy have to remember which ones they did but with lore link there's these convenient little basically tabs here which let me mark which ones are completed so if we know we get through that one then the player characters get armed then they go to get their bunks uh, and then they do the assault course, but that's all they get through is just those. Um, then I know the fact that I'm relatively good. It looks like it missed a couple. Oh, no. um, let's see, we get through all of those. And then there we go. It got basically it got through all of those, but we have all of these uncompleted ones. Now, that means the fact that the next session I want to be able to pick up and I want to know which ones exactly I want. So, but I, what I can do is I can click select, select incomplete, and that's going to pick out the ones which I, the group didn't do. 
And now that I have those selected, I can copy if I want to leave them here as a record or move uh, to a new or existing session. So for example, I know the fact that we're going to do one the next month or something like that. And I did just so we say October 9th. This is not a real session. October 34th, just to make sure no one thinks that's an actual session. Uh, next stream. Um, and now I can create that off. And if I click save, it was going to create a brand new session and copy all of the uncompleted ones over to that one so that I can. I'm going to go ahead and click copy. And this gave blanks us out. So now if I go to sessions, there's that October 34th stream, the spookiest date. Um, and the, just the events that our group didn't complete are listed there. So, and then basically that means the fact that I can quickly pick up from there and I don't have to worry about which ones did we do, which ones didn't we do. I have a quick record of it right there and I can bring the players up to speed really quickly. Because as we know, sometimes it'll be one month later, sometimes it's one year later. Real life happens and scheduling D&D groups is in fact actually a challenge. Uh, but with Lorelink, you can hopefully overcome that. And so with that, we are reaching the end of my time here. So we are going to go ahead and we will call it here. But thank you for thank you for watching either live um, or basically if you're watching this later in the VOD, we appreciate that too. Um, again, basically said big major events next week on this at this time, five o'clock, we will five p.m. Eastern time. We will be running an actual play of a PFS quest. And next Friday is September 9th. We will be running a D&D 5th Ed Adventure for the charity stream. So if you have time, please jump in and take a look at those. Um, if you are watching this and you have not followed us, please do. That is how we get the word out about this product. Um, and if you're interested in this product, um, please go to the website um, and take a look at... Uh, basically take a look at our the brain just completely we we're right at the end my brain is starting to go yes thank you 20 go to our website we have information about our campaign management tool there it's including information about how you can join the alpha and get access to the system and help us make it grow again thank you very much for watching um and basically we will catch you all later goodbye and good night <laughs>